Hi, I'm Robin Neidorf, the Director of Research for Ginfo, and this is our November 2022 update on what's new in our research and how our clients are using it. Let's start with our focus on value chain. In our focus on value chain, we continue to refine the message of the ROI of information, particularly for communicating with senior level stakeholders. As one of my colleagues pointed out in our debriefing following a client workshop, the key is that value and chain analysis turns an abstract idea into something concrete. Effective stakeholder communication requires us to demonstrate with data how information is tangibly part of business critical processes. One of my favorite examples of how to do this is common with our clients who support R&D functions. This simple figure shows the basic four-part process of R&D. With value chain analysis, you can document the specific and measurable ways your products, services, and expertise contribute to value at every stage in this progression. We're particularly looking forward to kicking off several projects in R&D-driven organizations where our clients are now applying value chain analysis to shift stakeholder perceptions, move the dialogue from cost cutting to the ROI of investments, and demonstrate their critical role in advising on information strategy. To read more about these projects on the Ginfo blog, see the link in the description below this video for links. Now let's turn to the focus on content portfolio. Senior analyst Stephen Phillips is fielding queries from his recent blog post relating to our focus on content portfolio. He seems to have struck a nerve of frustration amongst information licensing professionals who are still trying to educate stakeholders on the value of their investments and the risks associated with underinvesting. His most recent headline was this, content licensing, we get it. If you're looking for your peer group of other professionals who get it and are doing something about it, contact Stephen directly using the details in the description below. With the help of community-minded Ginfo client, Stephen led October's community session featuring a role play on a licensing negotiation. The participants in that session, all seasoned professionals, took the time to share their enthusiasm and their feedback, including this comment from an information manager in financial services. The community sessions allow me to look at my situations from another point of view. It's easy to get bogged down in the same way of doing things and looking at situations, and it's often difficult to get out of my habits. I like knowing that I'm part of a supportive community of professionals who are willing to share their expertise. We have one more community session scheduled for 2021, and seats are limited. Learn more by following the link below. And finally, let's look at the focus on the Center of Excellence. The real-world experience of senior analyst Sue Gleckner is invaluable in her work with clients in our focus on Center of Excellence. After 30 years of experience running the information services for the Consumer Health Products Division of a global pharmaceutical manufacturer, she knows all too well the day-to-day -day challenges that eat up a team's capacity. In her two most recent blog posts, she comments on the more strategic perspective that Jinfo's Center of Excellence methodology allows her to adapt with her clients, while staying grounded in the practical day-to-day -day activities. I wanna share two of her tips for making progress in optimizing your information services. First, practice using new vocabulary. Sue cites step three in the Center of Excellence methodology, the known force, as a practical exercise for shifting perception about the information services. And that means your perceptions, as well as those of your stakeholders. Second, do the visioning before you worry about the plan. When Sue coaches clients through their center of excellence work, it's often to keep them focused on their big ambitions. What's the vision for your most strategic value to the organization? You'll be surprised how even the biggest ambitions might be within reach if you allow yourself to develop them fully before dismissing them as impractical. Check out Sue's blog post by following the links in the description below and contact her directly to start the conversation about your big vision and then the practical steps it needs to, to make it happen. That's it for this month's update. Please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to be notified of future updates. Visit www.ginfo.com to explore our focus areas in more detail and to register to receive our twice monthly free newsletter. Thanks for joining me and see you next month.